You really need to think twice about when or even if you spay or neuter your dog. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the new research, some of the new serious health findings, alternative options to spay and neuter, vasectomies, leaving the ovaries intact. Now they're even studying the use of hormone replacement therapy. Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. During a spay or neuter, we're removing either number one, the ovaries from the female dog, removing estrogen and all of its positive health impacts. We're removing the testicles and testosterone from the male dogs and all of its positive health impacts. Over the last 10 years, there's been some really good research showing big health problems. Number one, with joint and bone disorders, ACL injuries, hip dysplasia, an increased risk for many of the cancers amongst many of our dog breeds, obesity, aggression, an increased chance your dog is going to develop an immune mediated disease such as hypothyroidism, even diabetes. A study done in 2013 at the University of California in Davis found that with golden retrievers that were either spayed or neutered, they had a marked increased chance of two different types of joint disorders, increased chances of ACL tears, increased chances of hip dysplasia. And these same dogs, they had a marked increased chance of certain types of cancers, lymphoma, hemangiosarcoma, and mast cell tumors. A study done in 2014 showed that in spayed female dogs, there was 11 times increased chance of them developing a brain tumor. An additional follow-up study found a two times increased chance of these dogs that were spayed or neutered developing bone cancer. There was a recent study done in 2025 and they looked at over 20,000 dogs. They were looking at ACL injury. And what that is, that's that primary ligament, also known as the cruciate ligament, which is the main one responsible for stability in the knee. And that's the one which so many of our dogs are tearing. They run, they stop or start suddenly. They're tearing that ligament. 40 or 50 years ago, didn't seem to be that prevalent. Now, I mean, it is so, so common. Likely a good third of you watching this video, you've had a dog that's had an ACL tear. First, it's very painful for your dog. Yes, there are surgical options, but these are costing in the thousands of dollars and your dog, I mean, they're never the same. You want your dog to have an intact ACL. But when they look at these over 20,000 dogs, they found there was a direct or inverse relationship to the timing or the correlation when these dogs were spayed or neutered and their chance of ever having their ACL tear. They found that for female dogs, if they were left intact upwards of three years of age, right, virtually no chance. For the male dogs, they were left intact closer to two years, a marked decrease chance of them tearing their ACL. Additional studies done in 2022, 2024, you now they've essentially backed up the findings of this big study, showing that early spay and neuter, you know, prior to a year, prior to two years, markedly increased the risk of these dogs tearing their ACL. And I'm not just making all this stuff up. I'm going to link to all of those studies. They'll all be in the description box. But what's the key takeaway from all of those studies? Early spay and neuter, which could be defined as early as three years of age, it's a marked increased chance of ligament damage, ligament tears, but also cancer, urinary incontinence, bladder and kidney stones, diabetes, hypothyroidism, obesity, aggressive and or fearful behavior, even dementia. But why is this happening? What's the underlying cause? How does this affect joint disorders, bone growth, serious diseases such as cancer? Research by Dr. Michelle Kutzler of Oregon State University has some suggestions. It's now believed that LH or luteinizing hormone, that's a hormone that is all part of some of these other sex related hormones, could be the primary problem. It's thought there's no feedback mechanism anymore. So with an intact dog, they can see rises in estrogen, rises in testosterone. When that happens, it's going to decrease the levels of LH. All these hormones are kind of interconnected. When your dog's been spayed or neutered, you remove that source of testosterone, the source of estrogen. So LH, you know, is continuing to rise unchecked or uncontrolled. And when that happens, you get all these different body systems no longer working correctly 
then it's thought that could be one of the primary causes leading to the bone and joint disorders, leading to cancers, immune mediated diseases, etc. But I don't want to just be the doom and gloom guy today, especially if you've got a dog that's already been spayed or neutered. Little Tula, you were spayed when you were a little puppy long before we had her. Fortunately, she's been okay. She's been able to avoid some of the more, those more common diseases, right? Such as ACL tears, such as some of the cancers. And she's 15 and a half going okay. And, and I think I've been pretty fortunate because she was spayed at such a young age. But if you're not in that position, you have a young dog or you're almost in that position, like you're at the age where, you know, your dog probably should be spayed or neutered, you have some other options. Well, number one, there's alternative forms. You could leave the testicles intact. You could do a vasectomy. I think you're probably very familiar with the word vasectomy. I'm not sure I am, right? Guess what? You can just remove the vas deferens, meaning the testicles are still intact. The testosterone is still being produced. So yes, and that's a legitimate veterinary procedure that an increased number of veterinarians are learning how to do. So you can offer not a traditional neuter, a vasectomy. Keep that source of testosterone in your male dog, potentially avoiding yeah, ACL injury. Some of these cancers, such as bone cancer. Then for the female dogs, the option is called a non-ovarial hysterectomy, just a hysterectomy. So what they're doing is they're keeping the ovaries intact, which I did a zillion, so many you know, spays or ovarian hysterectomies, but just leave the ovaries, right? You're removing the whole uterus. You're removing the cervix. And actually it's pretty similar type procedures to what doing that surgery, but just ensuring that those ovaries stay there. Those are both you know, not super complicated veterinary procedures, ones that most general veterinary practitioners are definitely going to have the ability to do and something you should be asking your veterinarian about. Personally, if little Tula was of the age and you know, I had her as a little puppy, I would go for that. I would keep her ovaries intact. I would remove her uterus or cervix. She would still, still have functioning ovaries. And if she were to be a male dog and she wasn't this crazy aggressive testosterone behavioral problem dog, you bet. I'd keep his testicles intact. I'd have a vasectomy. And if I was still in practice, I'd be the one doing it. But at the very least, I mean, if you're still going to do the traditional route, you live in an area where a veterinarian is not comfortable doing a vasectomy or just a hysterectomy, then at the very least, delay the age of which they are going to be spayed or neutered. For many of these female dogs, if you can, I mean, at the very least, I say from in general, of all of these breeds, wait till at least two years of age. But then what if your dog has already been spayed or neutered? Uh, maybe you have a golden retriever and you're like, okay, I see a marked increased risk of some of these cancers. I really want to prevent that. Well, I think many of us are familiar with hormone replacement therapy. Right? It's pretty commonplace now in the human population. And guess what? It's now being introduced in the world of animals. Currently, protocols are being studied. There's a foundation called the Parsimus Foundation. I'm going to link to them in the description box. They're looking and they're funding research into obviously the effects of early spay and neuter, alternative forms or hormone sparing sterilization, i.e. vasectomies, IV uh, hysterectomies, leaving the ovaries intact and hormone replacement therapy. And this is geared towards some of these dogs that have clinical health problems and or perhaps you have a breed which is a much higher risk and they happen to be spayed or neutered early. Obviously to me, number one comes to mind are the golden retrievers. The protocols that they're looking at is number one, replacing testosterone in these male dogs via a sub-Q injection given once a week. And then the female dogs, they're given oral estrogens, such as estrel. And while the dogs are on the hormone replacement therapy, they're also monitoring LH levels. What they want to do is see the LH levels drop. So when LH is at an appropriate level, then we know, okay, they're on the correct dose of the estrogen, the testosterone. Maybe they can then back off the amount or how frequent it's given. But this is new research. I think probably pretty important research. I would expect in the near future, we're going to start to see this more common. We're going to have a better way, refined way to replace these hormones, to monitor LH, ensuring we actually have these dogs that need these replacement hormones at the right and the safest dose. And we think it's also like new and whoa, novel, but 
pretty sure in the human world, the men were told that the only thing we can do for your large prostate is to neuter you. Wouldn't go over so well. Yeah, maybe we should do something like a vasectomy. Great idea. Of which they do. There's not a whole lot of male neutering going on in the human world. So why we make that standard practice in the dog population? I don't know. We just have. Yes, it's definitely time for a change. And as you can see, by altering, doing this a lot differently, we can probably really improve the health of our dogs. Thanks so much for watching this video on my update of spaying and neuter our dogs and some of the new alternative options, including right alter alternative forms of sterilization, hormone replacement therapy. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. Then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.